Hello, hello, and welcome to this video on shifting lights and patterns in Starship EVO. As you can see in front of me, I've got a nice example of just using a series of lights and lighting them up in sequence and going backwards and forwards. So similar to Kit from Knight Rider and uh, the Cylons from Battlestar Galactica. Although a classic series for the soldiers, um, and I think the Cylon Raider as well has a sweeping light on the front. So let's carry on round. I've got a little arrows to point the way round. I've kind of kind of done a viewing gallery for some reason, so you've got uh, Art Deco or weird patterns. I, I just like making things like that. It decorates everywhere. So the first example of how this all works. Now I've got a rail system set up, connected to a monitor as well to show what percentage is at. And query blocks going to all go into the same rail but what they're each doing is saying a threshold. So it's already detected that the rail goes from zero to one meters, and I've got it here going, so at 0 0.16 of a meter, it'll activate the light, and so on here. Now, I got this all a bit ass backwards, um, so essentially it should be 0 0.8 up there, but it's down there, I got it all back to front. Um, and you can control it by uh, using inferior or superior. But let's get this going. So if I just F to get it running, a bit difficult with the lighting. But you can see it lights up each of those in sequence. Now it's not quite what we've got out the front. There's a few more logic blocks to, to deal with that. Now you can see how I've got things backward because the sliding en entity on a monitor, which is connected to that, shows the opposite way around. Now this is one example of using just using a sliding block or a rotating block to control when the light sequence. If you just want to have a light sweeping back there is an easier method which is this one here. If I get this going, oops, push the button, uh, that one. there we go. So we've got a nice block sweeping back and forth and you can just about see a hint of it and that is just a rotating block with that sat on top with a red button on the end of it lit up controlled by that switch there and that is all just the sequencing logic that one there is actually just telling the rotator block to go between that and then I've got a timer to create a loop so that button goes through there hits that. So from the OR block it's going into the timer which is also going into an AND block. Now the AND block is sending a signal back to there only if this loop breaker switch is activated. So if I turn the switch off then that stops moving. I gotta switch it back on then push that and then it activates again. So for these looping circuits where you use a timer block this one's got uh, 1.5 seconds, so it gives it a chance to sweep across before telling it to go back again. And all that's doing is just flipping that switch backwards and forwards. Um, and that's just how that one works. So if I move the mouse, you can just about see it should highlight it. That's the rotating block in there. And I've just painted these all black just so it gives more of an effect to it. Now, that's if you don't want to go the complicated method, which I'll demonstrate now. So you can see this area here, and on the inside I've got two rate, rotating blocks. Now the idea was, as that rotates, it lights up each of these lights in sequence, and the second rotator will do it in the opposite way, so you'll have two sweeping back and forth. And this is the logic for it. I did 16 lights, now these are just being controlled by these, what are they called again? They're the Zor blocks as well. Now you can see the logic makeup I've got for each one. Each of these query blocks has got a certain threshold to be triggered and they're marked as superior as well so they wait until that value has been reached by each of the rotating blocks which are controlled by there. You can see they, they work opposite way around. Now as always when you're dealing with anything of lights you don't have the lights actually part of the logic. You have something like a, an OR gate, or a ZOR in this case, which are feeding the lights. That way you can have 
the, the pattern itself established in one in one particular way and then you can have it feed as many sequences of lights as possible. Now way, the way this one works, if I trigger it, make sure the loop breaker is on. Oh, that starts it already. So you can see the way these, they look like they meet in the middle and go back again, but they're actually sweeping across and then back again. So that one's going there and going all the way back to there. Now, normally, like the slider switch, as each condition's met, they stay on. But because i am got these connecting like two at a time to a, a single Zor block, that means if one is triggered, it'll light up. But as soon as two are triggered, it doesn't, because the Zor block will only activate if an odd number of inputs are active. And you just got that entire sequence. I skipped one there lighting them all up and you can get this nice sweeping effect with a, a loop circuit built in with a loop breaker so if I turn that off they'll reach their end and then stop now this to just get a sweeping light this is just really over complicated there's 16 there where you can do a nice simple one there with a, a light sweeping back and forth on a rotator block if you've got a spaceship and you've got or building a large mech and you would just want a nice light like that, similar to what you get on a Zaku from Gundam. That that'll be fairly cool enough. Now a bit more art. Let's move on to the last one which is in the thumbnail of this video. And I've used a whole load of switches, uh, buttons. They won't respond because I've got the, I haven't got them connected to anything, I've just got things going to them. And you've got this all blocks grid layout which at the moment, we'll connect to there, to there, to there, and all of these, which I'll show in a minute when it's running. And each one corresponds to what I'll call a pixel in this grid layout. Now I've got this looping timer circuit, so each of those all blocks will go towards a specific pattern in the sequence. So if I click on them in the sequence, you can see on the right how they move along, and then create a looping pattern with just a timer circuit which goes across to each. The final one loops back to an AND gate with another loop breaker switch. Now you can see this one I've actually wired up correctly because it doesn't trigger the entire circuit to run it. So let's get it going. Now you can see how it runs. And it does a nice effect. You get chevron so if you have a landing strip or a hangar area or even if you want to do some sort of neon light setup like a Las Vegas kind of cowboy hat tipping. You can probably put something together with a lot of effort. Um, you can still sequence this as you can see with um, slider blocks and tilting blocks. What are they called again? Hinges, yes. I keep forgetting the names. But with here, you can either set up something that pushes blocks up through the ground. Um, I don't know if you can form a grid with them you can make some nice interesting sequences or we can just use lights like this um, if you did a sine wave pattern so it sweeps like that that would be quite cool but you can also use the hinge blocks to do um, like a frill you see on some sort of uh, squid or something like that or so sea creatures will have a, a wavy sort of fins on the side um, if you speed the logic up it actually looks a bit better but it breaks the buttons because the buttons each need about half a second to uh, work properly so let's just change all of these you'll see in a minute how the lights will break all the buttons sorry okay they're behaving this time so that goes a bit better the idea is to get it to run fast enough so that that's not moving its full range and the next one's triggering, triggering before the previous has settled again. So let's try and speed these up a bit more. So you can see they're all starting to go a bit quicker now. It's actually behaving. Last time I tried this they wouldn't work. <laughs> So a little bit more refinement, so maybe a longer sequence actually worked better. Looks like something trying to play the piano now. But there we go, that is 
the animation sequences, let's turn that off for now. So they each make, make a, a clicking noise and those make their noises and it just it gets a bit noisy. It's best best view from a distance actually, if I get from a distance. The right colours will work as well. You can see where going too fast is actually ruining it a bit. But yeah, you can see you can sort of see how the effect works. It gives a, a rippling effect. The buttons are starting to break down a bit. But yeah, that is what I've got so far on different lighting and patterns. So uh, hopefully, hopefully you've all found this useful and uh, see you in the next one.